Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Today I am going to be, I hope, completing uh, this bass. It represents the first time ever that I have been fully in front of the editors. This has been the goal for, for a long time. Uh, yeah. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> We're pretty much there. The instrument has been uh, has been shielded entirely throughout pickups and control cavities. The there is no fret work. I woke up in panic last night thinking ah, the frets and no, it's fretless. We're good. Uh, so it's going to be a simple case of installing the pickups, wiring up, uh, putting the hardware on, and uh, having a string and see where we go. I, I'm not going to promise times. I've learned that that's a bad, a bad, bad idea. It's at this stage that you sort of look around and see if there's anything that you would uh, uh, like to change or upgrade, uh, see what's wrong, if anything, and, uh, and if there is anything, now is the time to fix it. All right, we've got the bridge ground hole wire drilled. We've got the uh, uh, holes from the pickups to the control cavity drilled. We've got a nut installed and in and good. The tuners are already in. The logo is done. And my bench is too short. I knew there was something that I needed to remember that needed to be redone. And essentially we've got traditional side dart markers, which are in between frets three, two and three and four and five, etc., etc., etc. And that's not actually accurate. This is now a fretless instrument. When we started building it, it was not planned to be fretless. Well, I wasn't entirely sure what was going to end up happening, actually. Uh, my original plan was fretless. We then decided fret ed and then went back on ourselves. I need to put some markers in on the end of each fret. I don't even know how I want to do this, come to think of it. Essentially, the musician needs to be able to see the end of each fret because that is where the intonation point is going to be. We've currently got some dark blue glow-in-the-dark material in the whole fret slot and from the front you can see it but that's not quite good enough so uh, so yeah I'm gonna have to go in and take some of that epoxy out and put in some white some white veneer I think and I think I'm gonna be using this gorgeous vintage gents saw by Buck We've got gold hardware going on. I wonder if I've got any brasses thin enough. But all sorts of stuff. And lots and lots of thick brass material here. Lots of copper. Don't have thin brass stock. Tools. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> okay, uh, 0 0.08th uh, of an inch brass shim stock and there's various other shims in here 0.15 all right whenever people say it's not good to hoard uh, show them this bit I completely and utterly forgot I had this shim stock and it turns out to be exactly perfect for the task I have in mind scalpel blade so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the scalpel blade to mark where I'm cutting first. I'm sure that my saw will feel the difference between the wood and the epoxy, but let's not leave anything to chance. The other thing that I want to do is mark out where I'm going to be cutting to so that I don't go too far. And I'm going to use my old friend masking tape. So we don't want this to be too over the top. Uh, do I want it to end with... So if I put it there, that's essentially going to be base f f viewed head on. They're all going to be ending just underneath the first string or thereabouts. And I think that's, I think that's good. So... Yeah. That actually works quite well. 
So the initial cut with that. And I'm using my thumb to hold it in place. And there we go. This is 0.008 shim stock. A little bit too much wiggle room. Hmm, 0.015 an inch. Some of this is supremely thin. 0 0.001, 0 0.015 is, is, the, uh, is the one for us then. It's a little thin, but uh, not too bad. Now I'm wondering about going in on this one just with the saw. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so that is that is the bulk of these done. I think three, five, seven, nine, twelve, etc. I'm going to make them both deeper uh, on the front edge and longer on the uh, on the instrument side. Now this is where I really, 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 really need to get this right, like one hundred percent. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. So, and that's the 12th fret there. And then we double check. Now the other, the, an alternative would be to use the brass just for these ones and copper or something else for the other thread markers. But I don't think that's necessary really. Okay. I don't particularly want to try and cut each piece when it's on the fretboard. The more, the more filing and cutting and, and messing around when it's actually glued in, the more likely I am to heat the very small piece of metal up to a point where it starts delaminating the glue. And even if that delaminates the glue a little bit, uh, over time, things might move. So what I'm gonna have to do is do this a sort of semi-complicated way and essentially put the piece in and then use a scalpel blade to mark what I need to cut out. And I've got a little diamond there that you probably can't see on the screen and cut that out by hand to within uh, maybe, let's say a millimeter or within a millimeter and uh, then that will be glued in. And this is gonna be a little bit fiddly. If I was using a standard wood veneer, it would be so much easier It's just whack a bit of veneer in, sculpt it off, chisel, sand, done. But of course, we're overcomplicating things. This is, this is something in which I have some experience. <coughs> Inlegic. Engineer's blue is the stuff that you want, or just a permanent marker. I find myself wondering if I should just use tin snips. 
If I use tin snips, it's probably going to distort the, uh, the metal a little bit, and I'll need to hammer it flat. Don't want to do that. There we go. <laughs> I remember I broke a blade the last time I used this. The Lorb Glarden saw blades, three O's. Come on then, I'm gonna cut this out and see, uh, see where we end up. That's a little bit little. Pliers, not pliers. Tweezers. There we go, that works. Minimal filing to do. So what I'm gonna do here is put a dab of this super glue on a piece of cardboard or something. Each little piece of the, uh, uh, of the, the inlay, I'm just gonna dab into the super glue and then it's gonna take the super glue to the, uh, to the gap itself and we'll go from there. Ooh, nice and thick, wow. Yeah, that's really, really, really chunky. There we go. There we go. How many people think that I'm going to ping one or more of these off across the room while doing the sort of, what, 17 or so I've got? 19 or so? 19. Don't be a fool, man. There we go. I'm making sure to push it as deep into the uh, Slot as I can. I also want to avoid cutting the fretboard if I can help it. Although there is going to be some sanding, I'm sure. I forgot which camera we were looking at. Should I be wearing goggles at this point? Probably. I think we're good. Let's crack on. I suspect I'm gonna go use pretty much every available edge. We shall see. I'm gonna get the tin snips out. Let's see, see what they do. Tin snips. There's a pair there, there's a pair there. Let's see what happens there. Okay, I'm not sure this is gonna work. No, that's just not, that's just not precise enough. Nope, there we go. That's no on the tin snips, at least these tin snips. I am, however, gonna use them to cut myself a nice square line there, he says. Completely messing it up.
nice. Uh, just cutting each piece out, they, they, they're ending up a millimeter or so bigger than I need, um, which is about right. I'm being very careful not to get uh, super glue dripping down the side. Uh, that would not be fun. I'm just realizing what we should have done is uh, super glue and inlay powder. That would have been much quicker and much easier than this nonsense. But anyway, uh, now at this point I've pretty much gone most of the way around and I've got the sawtooth pattern. Uh, I'm running out of uh, clean edges to use and I've also got the guitar body here that I don't want to dig into. So yeah, it's a case of uh, cutting off the excess, giving myself a nice straight line. There we go. A little bit wasteful. There we go. I love how thick this is. Nearly, 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 nearly there. That was good, I'm happy with that. Let's have a look at what we've got going on here, shall we? I don't want to hit this area with accelerator because I'm not sure what it would do to that finish and I don't want to experiment live. Uh, I am, I'm gonna turn the guitar around so I'm filing from the outside in. Well, colour me surprised. So that one's a little bit high. I'm gonna have to do that in stages. I really don't want to delaminate it. I'm being quite gentle and careful with this. If I hit it with a coarser file, I'm liable to actively rip out an inlay or two. So yeah, this is a, this is a gentle file. And uh, it's taking a while, but it will be worth it. It 
is relatively subtle. The brass. So we'll see. Get out. Okay, this is a coarser, a coarser file. Liable to do a little bit more damage to the fretboard as well. That one is popping out because I went, let it get too hot. The whole time I've been saying, I don't want to heat these things up too much. That one was taller than it should be. I've heated it up too much. I've used two cores of a file and, uh, and now I've lost it. Poopy, poopy, poopy. And we all thought I won I'd, I'd sort of passed the point where I could fling one of these tiny little inlays across the room. So the problem was that I'd just made that one too big. And uh, yeah. And of course I'm a fool. Perfect. So once I've got the brass down, then I'll be able to re-sand the fretboard and oil it, and that'll be fine. Uh, going with a, a leveling beam down that way when they were all, uh, all high, would be a, a recipe for disaster. It would be ripping masking, uh, ripping sandpaper and ripping inlays out of the, the body, etc. Now I've just got to get these on the edge. Go in very carefully. I'm using my knuckle here as a depth stop to guarantee that I don't go um, beyond any further down than I want. And there we go. Uh, I'm pretty much there on this. It was a, a big task that wasn't actually planned. I now need to and I need to sand the fretboard uh, or fingerboard. Don't have frets now, does it? And uh, I go for that. Uh, now, with regards to the different sound uh, as you fret over, no, I, I really don't think it's going to make any difference. I'm being very careful as I go up to the, uh, the nut. Uh, it's a fender style nut, so I'm not going to knock it out, but I may well shatter it if I go if I go wrong. And uh, and even though I don't want to remove, I don't need to remove any material from the treble side. Uh, I do want it to be an even curve across, so it's all yeah, it's all good. Yeah, that works, that's nice. I'm actually gonna go one step further because I can. So there's 1200. Actually, let's get to 2000 as well. Okay, so now this 1200 grit is not removing very much wood. I'm just burnishing the top surface. and also polishing the fret ends. No, the fret ends, ha! The inlays. Okay, that's 1200. What I've got here is a raw ebony fretboard. And uh, very carefully, because I don't want too much oil to go onto the uh, body or anything like that, 
I'm going to apply some high build guitar finishing oil. I don't want huge amounts, I'm not going to splooge it everywhere, and I'm going to uh, buff it in with the 2000 grit wet and dry paper. So not very wet. This is picking up the dust. It's going to protect the, the brass inlays from oxidizing to a certain extent. 2000 grit. And I'm essentially buffing the oil into the fretboard, forcing it to cure a little bit more. This is a way to get a really, really, really nice finish. It doesn't work as well over a stain because you do tend to bring the stain up. So I found some two and a half thousand grit paper and that's my, uh, that's me done. Okay, so that looks a little bit rough at the moment. But, when we buff off the excess, we're starting to get a pretty cool finish. Elfie, Elfie Shine Resin Enriched 100% Natural Hard Wax Polish. This stuff is cool. I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. Okay, we were talking about, uh, earlier we were talking in the chat about buffing an ebony fretboard using a, a, a bench grinder and a loose leaf mop polishing compound, etc. I could do that, but with this instrument, <laughs> would a high gloss fretboard really look in place? No, it just wouldn't. After four hours of this live stream, I have returned back to an instrument that's in the same state it was at in the beginning, i.e. ready for hardware and strings. Don't let me forget the ground wire. Okay, uh, let's move that, I don't need that anymore. Ground wire, I knew there was something. Okay, uh, black for ground today. Okay, just sticking some grease in each hole quickly. Just a little bit around the top. Probably should have used uh, the almighty all for that. But hey, I'm looking at this thinking, hmm, there's five screws there. Really, I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. Perhaps using a power drill? Really do rather enjoy using hand tools. Most of the time. I should have used a drill for this. Goto are truly upping their game. They've always used good screws, but there are some hybrid companies that use screws that would have just, yeah, not worked. Everything's, yeah, really nice. Really nice indeed. All right. I can't even see the holes because of the uh, shielding paint. Of course it fits, it's a crimson template I used. Uh, I do need to put some foam underneath there though. Okay. 
here we go. Strings. Roto sound, a 40 to 100 gauge. For what it's worth, I'm really looking forward to this. So I'm leaving more wines on this string. It's going to push it down further. Really, really, really feel like I need to build more bases. Look at that instrument. I'm going to get it very, 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 very roughly set up. And then uh, uh, we'll get on with the wiring while the strings are just settling down a little bit. <laughs> of course, there's still some work to do. Uh, my pots are a little bit big. And I remember thinking that this was going to be the case when I routed the stuff. And then I completely messed up because I carried on without exercising my right to gouge. I love using a sharp tool. Oh my gosh. There we go. Scalper blade. Wire trimmer. You tend to want to have the earth wire star off one point so you don't end up with a ground loop. Uh, so I'm just out of I'm going to do that on the central, central one. So for now, let's chop my ground. No! I plugged in my soldering iron, it turns out the extension lead wasn't plugged in. That, that sucks. We're going to need to sort out the back plate as well once wiring is done. I've just tinned the ends of the three ground wires, put a little bit of solder on the on the iron, warm up the part, and then put some solder on that. And if you do the same on the end of the wire, you don't end up burning what you're working on. Uh, because it'll, it'll solder together very, very rapidly. I know it's not going to be necessary on one of these logs, but I always forget which damn one. Yeah, let's get this wiring done as fast as possible. One day I'm going to do a gorgeous, gorgeous wiring job. It's going to be supremely attractive. Everybody's going to say, oh my gosh, Ben, that was a work of art. And uh, that day is not today. When I'm dealing with short wire, I do prefer to use a scalpel blade uh, to take the shielding off. Uh, maybe I should put some, uh, some goggles on. I've now changed to a point where I'm using really thick wire. 
uh, I think the thinner stuff that is often used in guitar building. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not great. Now you'll notice I'm cleaning the tip of the soldering iron every single time I put it down and sometimes uh, in between. Uh, it's quite an important part of the job. Okay, so at this point I'm going to take uh, the advice from, from the big unit who says you should always uh, screw a piece of grounding wire to the shielding uh, inside your Faraday cage. I'm going to do that. Always start with a braddle. This one was made for me by uh, Brian over at BC Woodworks. He's fantastic. the only problem with two-handed drills. They require what you're working on to be stable, damn it. That is uh, absolutely not. Fine, I'll go find a power drill, hold on. There we go. So while this is still relatively pliable, just made a little loop and I'm going to solder it together at the end. There we go. So that's actually wicked solder somewhere around the loop, which is quite cool. So essentially this, this loop of wire is now being held um, against the shielding paint. And then I'm going to solder that to the back of our pot here. Okay, so we've got ground going to the center pot from the bridge, from the Faraday cage, and from the other pots. I'm now going to go from that pot all the way out uh, to my jack. All right, so the live out from the pickups go to the center lug on these. So essentially that means that when I'm uh, using this volume, it's not going to affect anything on the, uh, on the bridge pickup and vice versa because we're using a different lug to what you would normally use on a standard guitar. Uh, I don't know the why, uh, I just know the effect. Just for fun, I'm going to take a section of the uh, cover off this length of wire. So I'm tinning the, sol the soldering iron, putting a little bit of solder on it, and I then, and I tin the part. So I've got solder on the soldering iron, uh, at this point probably sans flux. I've got solder on the legs of my capacitor, then clean the soldering iron, then retin heat that yeah that's generally how I do it now cuz i'm thinking about that so i'm not sure i'm being quite as naughty as uh, as it sounds at first uh, at first thing now however i need to take that entire part out because uh, the leg of that capacitor was far, far too long. This is a very not great soldering operation, but it does, not great looking, but it definitely, definitely does the job. So yeah, I went and got a, a little uh, practice base amp. Uh, wow, it's actually plugged in. Okay. This is not likely to sound great. My jack socket currently isn't plugged in, so I'm just going to gently clamp the, uh, the lead in there. Okay, hold on. So that should be bridge pickup off neck on, neither off, bridge, 
And a tone. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe we have a functioning instrument. <laughs> okay, cool. Now the inside of my jack cavity there is not is not shielded. I've moved that over to the side, but I had to move that lug so that it wouldn't short off on that. But we should be good. I'm not going to push that all the way down just yet. I need to have a hole drilled first. Now, if that's too tight, I can uh, I can pull it up with a uh, just a standard wood screw. Okay, just finessing a little bit. Yeah. That will do nicely. Uh, now I need to take it out again. And... Uh, <laughs> and shield it. Crimson shielding paint. Paint from the centre to the outside. This has just been watered down a little bit, as uh, uh, I'm sure you can see. So it's a little bit more liquid than, uh, than our shielding paint generally is. Now I'm making sure to go right up to the edges so that um, it will be contacting with uh, the rest of the shielding paint on the inside of the cavity and thus creating a perfect Faraday cage, uh, keeping the uh, dreaded hum out as much as possible. There we go. So the shielding paint is going to dry very, very quickly. So that's all good. Let's just install these. So turn the volume all the way up. My 10 is facing that. The only thing that I haven't put on this instrument yet is a serial number. I'm even less of a bass player than I am a guitarist. Alright, 
Thank you very, very much for watching. Please do not forget that this instrument could be yours. Check out the raffle link in the description below. It has been going live for a while now, and uh, but the odds are still good. The odds still may well be in your favor. I can't believe I said that. Uh, now, as I said, I'll add frets. If you want frets, if you win it, I will change the control knobs. If you want, if you win it. And uh, other than that, well, this has been my first bass build on the channel for a while, and I think only the second actually on the channel since I started it, however many years ago. Guaranteed I'm going to do more. I love it. I've had a blast, and uh, there are more bases on the, on the horizon. Now let me know, what should I do? What should I make? Click like, please subscribe. Hit the notification button and all that stuff, and... Uh, Cease zoning out when I say things like that. Come on, people. Uh, see you soon. Goodbye.